Oh, hey guys. Just recreating what it feels like every time a sheep dies. Alright, how to lose all your money sheep farming, and in short, it is this. Not controlling animal death in your operation. Also guys, I wanna make you aware of six free worksheets that I have. These are gonna cover things like how to actually decide which species, sheep, cows, etc., is best for you, how to evaluate your resources and figure out exactly what you can farm. Click on the link down below, it's my gift to you, absolutely free. I put out a video last week that went viral, link to that video right here, and it was how sheep earn me 400% more than cattle. But I wanna be really clear with you in that sheep are no utopia. In our first two years of sheep farming, we had some significant losses. In fact, losses that accounted for half of our adult flock and an entire season's worth of lambs. We had to work very swiftly to put some management practices in place, basically to keep ourselves from losing all of our money sheep farming. And today I'm going to talk to you about number one, primary causes of loss in our operation personally. Number two, what we did to really plug those management holes and stop those losses. And number three, I'm gonna talk about three primary diseases that you wanna avoid buying into your flock at all costs. You're gonna have death in your operation from here until forever. When I got into this, I began to be awakened to these principles of regenerative agriculture and actually seeing firsthand how it improved the health of our animals. I thought, this is it, and I will not experience in my flock or in my farm anything but peaceful, natural death. <laughs> and that was just kind of a silly assumption on my part. This year was an excellent, excellent year for my flock, but I still lost eight head, and that is about 20% of my total head count. And six of eight deaths were linked to lambing and lambing-related complications. I'm gonna get into that just a little bit down the road. And as I mentioned that number, that 20% loss, you guys might be saying, whoa, that's kind of a lot. But with the numbers that I ran in my previous video, even accounting for that 20% loss, sheep versus cows still presents me with a gross revenue potential of 25,000 versus 8,900. At the end of the day, I did not commit to sheep because I thought or was under the expectation that they were a low maintenance animal. But I committed to sheep because I realized that on such a small acreage, they were really the only way I could generate a significant income. A lot of you guys are commenting and saying, oh, what about hogs and chickens and so forth? And yeah, I could run pigs and I could run chickens, but my primary goal is to run with as minimal inputs as possible. And when it comes to hogs and chickens, while the gross revenue may be higher, they are animals that do require significant grain inputs. Chickens are grain-based in their diets, broilers especially, and pork is a lot the same way. Unless you have a huge amount of food scraps, you're gonna find yourself supplementing a lot. My sheep thrive on pasture and pretty much pasture only. So long as there's grass out there, my sheep don't need much beyond a loose mineral, and that is really a tremendous advantage. Up front, at the onset of our sheep farming journey, parasites were a major killer in our flock. We honestly underestimated, number one, our region being extremely parasite heavy with the humidity and the rainfall. We were doing nothing along the lines of pasture management, and we were honestly doing nothing along the lines of conventional deworming. And once we really realized what we were up against with respect to needing to intensively manage these parasites, we, number one, got our conventional deworming regimen under control and really got a good education on how to properly do that for our animals. And number two was pasture management and rotational grazing. And I cannot emphasize how absolutely essential this is for any sheep operation. Good pasture management. And this channel is kind of dedicated to how I've done that for my flock, so please go back and watch all of the videos pertaining to rotational grazing sheep. But those two things, a wise usage of conventional deworming and good pasture management, have almost entirely eliminated our death to parasites here on the farm. Number two is predators, and what we had was a five-strand barbed wire perimeter fence. Coyotes could come and go in and out of that fence and would sometimes take out two sheep in a night. Now what we did that really stopped these losses, and we haven't had any losses to predators since then, was we installed a really tight perimeter fencing. And this was something we did because we actually needed to keep our sheep physically contained. But it also was dual purpose in that it was so tight that I believe it keeps the predators 
out. Right now I am training a formal livestock guardian dog to keep with the sheep because to be honest, last lambing season, leaving those lambs out on pasture was absolutely nerve-wracking. And while I did not lose any lambs to predators last lambing season, I attribute that more to my prayers for protection than anything else. Another thing that really can hit your flock hard, and I got a small taste of that this last summer, is mineral deficiencies. But you wanna make sure to keep out a really good free choice mineral for your sheep year round and keep it dry. Okay, so three diseases that you need to really watch for when buying in stock, and this is why I really advocate for avoiding sale barns at all costs as a beginner in sheep farming or farming in general. Something sale barns are notorious for is ranchers sending their cull animals. And these three diseases upcoming are diseases you really need to watch for and avoid them like the plague because that's truly what they are once they enter your flock. Number one is ovine yoni's disease. This is a non-treatable disease. Once your animal has it, they will die of it and they will spread it throughout your flock. And basically what it is, is they starve to death on a full stomach. Number two is Cassius lymphadenitis. And again, you cannot get rid of this once it is in your flock. And Cassius lymphadenitis results in the buildup of abscess material in the vital organs. And a lot of times when you have this disease in your flock, it is not detectable until, number one, it either erupts in a boil on one of those lymph node locations, and that boil tests positive for the bacteria, or number two, your animal is sent off to the butcher where the carcass is condemned because the abscess material is found in those vital organs. Our third is also an absolute plague and something that is not treatable, and it is ovine progressive pneumonia. And this is something that will progressively deteriorate the health of your ewe. You'll notice things like arthritis symptoms in the ewe. She will be limping and eventually just waste away in the same way that the Yoni's disease will affect her. While we're here, I kind of want to go into some more detail on the eight losses that I experienced this year. And six of eight were lambing or lambing related losses. And that's really where your management's going to need to kick in strong to avoid those mortalities. But I lost six lambs and three lambs were just simply stillbirth, malpresentation, or a difficult labor that killed the lamb, or they were the result of bad udders on the mom's part. And that is really an area that I have cold hard for this year. I had very little tolerance for any udder issues simply because as I ran these numbers and looked at my mortalities and my losses and saw the relation there, I wanted to be very serious about eliminating the source of those losses. I lost a U to a condition called ring womb, and I made a video about that. I will put it up here. And the loss of the other adult U was unfortunately a handling error on my part. We were running our post lambing dewormer and she was on the wild side. She jumped out of the chute and instead of chasing her across the pasture to get her back into the chute for treatment, I let her go hoping she would make it to the next inspection. But Major deal number one is always err on the side of caution when she is nursing. And that is something that I learned the hard way because she died about four weeks later of anemia from the barber pole worm. You're gonna notice two videos pop on screen here and they are the two previous videos in this series on why I chose sheep over cows for my farm business. Please catch up by watching those two if you have not. Thank you so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. It's <coughs> gonna be so cute. Is it burning very well? I guess it's kind of like sheep, you know? Burn some of the profits, but not all. <laughs>